Okay, uh, let's get this show on the road. Hello, everyone. Hope you're well. Welcome to another edition of Math 1108. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. Where is everybody? Is anyone here? Am I alone in the room? Ah, there, there we go. So, for some reason, I couldn't see your cameras on this one. Oh, now I can see you guys. All right, awesome. Um, okay, cool. All right. So, hopefully, you guys are doing well. Uh, let's actually jump into it. So, we finished chapter what our excursion in chapter two last time. So today we're gonna to start chapter three. Chapter three is where your homework starts. So it's gonna be very relevant stuff to us as students, as well as human beings. Um, and it is uh, where we're gonna start talking about financial math. And the journey is going to start with interest. And a wise man once said, you should be interested in interest. I said that, I, I said that last time I taught this class, but I said it because Interest is the thing that makes the financial world go. Interest is the thing that people can use to take advantage of the thing that makes the financial world go. Interest is important is what I'm trying to tell you. So you should be interested in interest and we're going to do it. So let's just actually get into it. Okay. Um, interest is important and we're going to learn about interest. So part zero, uh, which was important to get our mathematical muscles flexed um, was on dealing with exponentials and logarithms. And today you're gonna to see where some of those guys come into play. Um, but uh, we're going to move on to the part that everyone cares about, money, okay? So financial math, yay, all right. Interest is where it starts because um, interest is so important. You need to know how interest is working for or against you in every financial situation you're in. It's very important. So we're gonna talk about what interest is, different kinds of interest, how they would affect you, and what are the calculations that go into it. Um, I'm also gonna talk about some real world examples of these types of interest. Uh, so uh, we will have a lot to chew on today. I'm also going to ask you guys to use your calculators to do some stuff to make sure that you know how to use your calculators. So have those handy and let's get into it. Interest, what is interest? Let's start out with the definition. Um, interest. is a fee charged by a lender when loaning money. Now, you might say, oh, but I have a savings account and I get interest on it, but I'm not borrowing that money, it's my money. Yeah, that's the thing. When you have a savings account, you are the lender. You loan the bank your money and they pay you interest to have your money in their bank because they can do stuff with your money while you're not doing anything with your money. They make a lot more interest than they pay you in that savings account, by the way, but we'll talk about that in the future. Um, so it's a fee charged when loaning money. So when you're gaining interest, you're the lender. Uh, when interest is used against you that you have to pay back, you're the borrower. Um, so interest is just a fee that is charged when uh, loaning money. Another important term that you need to know is uh, principal. The original amount of money borrowed is called uh, the principal. So I'm defining the word principal. Uh, what else do I need to tell you? Definition. Uh, interest is charged as a percentage of some value. Um, I, I, will, I will make this more uh, specific a little bit later because the value that you're being charged interest on is what determines the type of interest as well as uh, some time considerations. So it's just a percentage that they're charging you on some value. Um, and it's uh, this percentage is called the interest rate. Uh, 
Um, often, uh, this is based on an annual uh, time basis. an annual percentage rate. So oftentimes they base it on uh, the percentage interest that they charge you over one year. And they would refer to, the, uh, refer to the interest rate at that point as an annual percentage rate or APR. So if you start looking at uh, certain documents that you have, like your credit card bill and stuff like that, they'll call the interest that they charge you APR, right? Because it's over one year. Um, so if your interest rate is 18%, it's 18% APR. That means over the course of a year, uh, we're charging you 18%. However, not really. We'll see that not today, but tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow, but Friday. Okay. Um, so APR is another way for another way to say interest rate, but it specifically means over the year. And most of the time, that's what so really emphasis on often here, most of the time, uh, when someone quotes an interest rate to you, it's going to be based on an annual uh, thing. Okay, what else do I wanna tell you? Now, okay, so the type of interest depends on what sum the APR applies to and how uh, often interest is applied. Uh, there are three main types. I know if you, uh, in the world of finance, there might seem like there's an infinite number of types, infinite number of ways that people try to squeeze money out of you. But mathematically, there are really only three basic types of interest. Um, one is called simple interest. Two is called compounded interest. And in some ways, these are the only two types, but we can refine the compounded interest scenario into another one called continuously compounded interest. But it's seen as a whole category onto itself because in reality, it's actually kind of impossible to to do unless someone literally puts in a mathematical formula and does it to you. Um, but it kind of involves infinity. So it's not something that can happen in reality, um, but it's very important for theoretical reasons. And uh, I'll mention what some of those reasons are. So it's kind of it's kind of like compound interest, but you kind of throw infinity into the mix. Um, but uh, so it's, it's, it's compounded, but it's, it's a whole other category because when you throw an infinity into things, uh, the mathematics can get uh, wild. Okay, so these are the three main types. So let's actually uh, start talking about the first type. Simple interest. Okay, so this is when interest is charged on, uh, based only on the principal and the length of time uh, it is borrowed. This is called uh, the loan term. So the loan term 
is how long you have the loan for, right? You can have a nine month term, a one year term, a five year term, et cetera, right? So whenever someone charges you interest and it's only based on the original amount you borrowed over some time, that's simple interest. That's all they care about. I am lending you $1,000. I'm going to charge you interest, a percentage of that $1,000. And that's all I care about, right? This is called simple interest. Uh, mathematically, this is kind of how it works. The original amount times the interest rate times the time, PRT. So I here stands for the interest charged, uh, which is simple here. Uh, P is, of course, the principal. R is the interest rate. Very usually APR. Uh, and T is the time. Uh, and I would caution you, uh, make sure the R and T have the same time units. So sometimes you might have a problem that they tell you the APR, but then they said, oh, you borrowed it for 17 months, right? So the fact that they give you an APR means they think the interest is charged per year, but then they give you a time in months it's, you can't use those numbers. You have to convert them to the same time. Usually you want to convert to years, right? You, you convert the time, uh, the loan term to whatever time units your interest rate is based on. So whenever they give you an APR, no matter what they tell you the time is, convert it to years, okay? So you need to make sure because you'll get the wrong answer if you plug in the, the, the wrong numbers. So that's important. So uh, this leads to This guy, A stands for amount, amount you have to pay back, balance, whatever. Um, the amount equals P plus PRT. So this is the original amount borrowed. Uh, this is the interest that they charge you to borrow that. And this is the amount you need to pay back. Okay. So that gives us with, if you factor out uh, the common term P, one plus RT, this gives you what we call the simple interest formula. or future value. Um, which I think I should mention that, uh, FYI. A is sometimes uh, called FV, which stands for future value, the amount you have to pay back in the future, or the amount the money is worth in the future. Um, and P is sometimes called PV or present value, the amount you have now, what the money is worth now, the amount you wanna borrow now in the present. Okay. So you might see these same formulas, but instead of A and P, you might see FV and PV, they're the same thing, same intuition, right? So FV is whatever is gonna happen in the future, PV, present value is whatever is happening right now. So in this context, A is FV, how much you have to pay back in the future. P is how much you're borrowing right now. Okay, so that is the simple interest formula and pretty much the only formula you have to know for simple interest other than trying to answer certain parts about the formula. And so um, just to, to be transparent, simple interest, it's usually very easy. This formula isn't very hard to uh, deal with. So chances are in this class, 
if I'm asking you a question on simple interest, it's gonna be like part A of a problem and where part B, I'll probably ask you about another kind of interest or ask you about something else, right? So it's never gonna be the case where I'm only gonna ask you to compute the simple interest thing and then you don't have to do anything else because it's usually not bad. So let's actually do an example, not a terribly complicated one, just one to make sure that we're following along with the idea. So here's a simple interest example. Okay, so you can take a picture of that or write it down if you want or wait on the notes. Um, but yeah, let's keep some nice rounded numbers. Uh, so let's not kill ourselves. Uh, you borrow thousand dollars at 9.5% APR with no prepayment penalty. So here's how, what that's about. Um, sometimes people decide to charge you interest, right? However, they might say, okay, I'm gonna give you this loan for a year and I'll charge you 9.5% interest at the end of the year, right? So the thing is, if you pay them back before the end of the year, technically they didn't charge you interest yet. So you can actually get away without paying interest. And so what a lot of lenders will do is if you pay the loan back early, they'll actually hit you with a fee for paying it back early because you're actually robbing them out of interest that they could get, right? So if you pay it back early, sometimes you get hit with another fee. This is called a prepayment penalty. You're paying it back before the end of the loan term. So the lender couldn't get to collect all the interest that they were expecting. So they sometimes hit you with a fee. Sometimes they don't, um, but that needs to be stated. So if you're borrowing money or you're getting a loan or you're doing any transaction and it's something that you're going to have to pay back in the future, you should look for a clause that says no prepayment penalty or there is a prepayment penalty, here's what it is. You should be aware that this is a thing, right? So sometimes you borrow money, if you pay back early, they hit you with a fee because you're actually cheating them, quote unquote, out of interest. Right? But let's assume that's not the case. If you pay it back early, you're not going to pay any of the interest that was that. Like They just hit you with interest, whatever, up until that point. Okay, so there's no prepayment penalty. You borrow $1,000, 9.5% APR. Assuming simple interest is charged, how much would you have to pay back if you pay it back in nine months or one year? So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to look at this problem from two different loan term perspectives. You borrowed over a year or borrowed over nine months. So let's actually uh, do part A. So in part A, uh, we know what formula we wanna use, so let's actually do it. So here, uh, P equals uh, 1,000, right? That's the principal, the amount you wanna borrow. Uh, the interest rate we call R, uh, that is 0 0.095. So the interest rate, the percentage is usually written as a decimal. Remember how to write, we spoke about this before, to convert a percentage to decimal, you divide by 100 or you move the decimal point two places to the left. Um, so the 9.5 becomes 0 0.095 and you're gonna use that number in your calculations. Remember percent means divide by 100 per century. Okay, so that's your APR. Uh, T um, is the only other thing we need to know. What is T here? nine months nine months so t is nine would it be nine over 12 be nine over 12 right so remember make sure your r and t have the same time units okay the interest is per year and t was given in months you need to change the time to months, right? So that's actually very important. The time units. So this is like 0.75 is the number that you should use here because you want to change it to years. So that's how, that's a, that's a way you can get this problem wrong. If you just like take whatever time you see and plug it into the formula, might not be the correct answer because your units aren't matching up. Interest is charged for a year. You want to put in time in years. Okay, so you'd actually use 0.75 as the time, right? So yeah, and then I know it's simple interest. That means the amount I have to pay back is going to be P times one plus RT in parentheses. Uh, you want to memorize the formula. 
once you learn the formula, just write it down every time you're using it. Eventually you'll remember it. Um, so now that means I'm gonna plug in a thousand and then multiply that by one plus 0 0.095 times 0.75. And what is that? Plug that into your calculator. Tell me what you get. Are we still working on it? Uh, I got one thousand seventy one and point two five. Okay. Uh, that's also what I got when I I tried it. Uh, I, I calculated some of these ahead of time myself, but I want to make sure that you know how to calculate it. Because um, in the other class, uh, some people were getting the wrong numbers because they were plugging things wrong in their calculator. I want to make sure that you know how to plug things in your calculator. So when I ask you to calculate it, actually do it because if you don't know how to use your calculator, you wanna know now before the test, right? You wanna know that, oh, I, sh I should learn to use this calculator. <laughs> so so uh, make sure you actually grab your calculators and actually try these problems. Make, make sure you're, we're getting the same numbers um, because that's, that can be an issue. Um, okay, uh, B, so uh, now same, same numbers, same, same idea, but now it's over a year. So here, it's the same P, we're borrowing $1,000. It's the same R, 9.5%, which is 0 0.095 in decimals. And now your T is one. I can take the exact time mentioned because it's given in years, right? One year. So I don't need to convert any units. It's already one year. So no need to divide by 12 or do anything, okay? So now I would just, since we're doing simple interest, that means the amount I have to pay back is going to be one plus RT. And uh, so that's going to be 1000 times one plus 0 0.095 times one. Now this one hopefully is, is okay to do in your head uh, because you have 1.095 times a thousand times a thousand just means move the decimal point three places to the right. So um, it's 1095 is what you should get if you plug that into your calculator. Um, yeah, so that's how much you would have to pay back. So uh, with simple interest, 9.5%, at the end of one year, you literally pay back 9.5% of $1,000, right? 9.5% of $1,000 is $95. Um, and that's what you get hit with. And that, that's, that's it. Um, simple interest. Yeah, very nice, very cool. Okay, so that's that. Let's move on to the other guy, uh, compound interest. Um, now this guy uh, really starts to stack up on you because compound interest is when they add the interest on top of the interest. And what do I mean by that? It's like uh, you borrow some principal, so there's an original amount of money that you borrowed. And of, of course, after some time, they charge you interest. But then what they do is that they pretend that that's the new amount, that's the amount you borrowed, right? So it includes the original amount you borrowed, plus the interest they charge you, they take that as the new amount, 
And then the next time they charge you interest, it's charged on that bigger amount, right? And so they hit you with interest there. And then they take that as the new amount. And then the next time they charge you interest, they charge you interest on that bigger amount. And so they're stacking interest on top of interest on top of interest. So it's not just on the original money that was borrowed. Every time they hit you with interest, they pretend that that was money you borrowed from them. And then they hit you with interest on top of that. So that's what comp they compound the interest on each other. That's what that means. Uh, so this is when uh, interest is charged. based on the principal and accrued interest. Over time. So they hit you with interest and they pretend like you borrowed that interest from them and then they hit you with more interest on top of that interest. Uh, so that's called compounded interest. Okay. Um, interest uh, compound interest may also be charged in installments uh, several times over a year. Um, so here's another way that they can get you with uh, compound interest is that they'll tell you what interest they're giving you but they'll actually split that into pieces, installments, and they hit you with some parts of the interest throughout the year. Uh, so they can say, okay, I'm gonna charge you 10% interest, um, but I'm going to charge you twice per year. So what they do is they take that 10%, they divide it by two, which is 5%. So six months into the year, they hit you with that 5% of the interest. And then at the end of the year, they hit you with another 5% of the interest. But remember, it's compounded. So in the middle of the year, when they hit you with that 5% interest, they add that to the principal. And then at the end of the year, when they hit you with the other 5%, it's actually a 5% on top of the original 5% that they hit you. So you, so in effect, they you get hit with more than 10% interest, right? So even though they say 10% interest compounded, you have to be aware it's not really 10% interest. And we'll, we'll actually discuss this more in the next class. But that's this is done pretty much all the time. Like the, like no one charges you compound interest and then just like hits you at the end of the year with all the interest because then it would just be simple interest, right? So uh, no, they hit you several times throughout the year and then it they hit you with the interest on top of that. Um, so there are some typical time intervals that you should be aware of. Some of these are gonna be obvious, but I, I want you guys to, to know because a lot of times it's going to be described in words and not given to you as a number or a numerical value. Uh, so let me tell you what the name of such a thing would be. And then a uh, number of times compounded uh, per year. I think I wanted to do that in two lines. That's why I, I wrote it like that, not in line with name. It doesn't matter, but I don't want you to think my hand was that lean that I'm not in. Okay, so uh, uh, one is annually. So I can say, oh, blah, 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 compounded annually, blah, 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 blah. And what that means is it's compounded one time per year. Uh, which is, effect is, is effectively simple interest, right? So um, pretty much compounded annually. It doesn't actually affect you unless you're doing multiple years, right? So within one year, 
it's effectively simple interest within a year. Effectively simple interest. Or T less than or equal to one, right? You really only start seeing the difference if you're borrowing the money for multiple years. Um, so annually is one time per year, right? Usually at the end of the year. They could also charge you semi-annually. So you can hear a problem go blah, 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 compounded semi-annually, blah, 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 blah. What that means is two times per year uh, or every six months. Um, and just to kind of give you the idea of the installment, let me actually write down what I mentioned before. Uh, so for example, if 10% APR, this is split into um, 10 divided by 2 equals 5%. And you are charged 5% after six months. and then 5% after another six months. Compounded, of course, right? So when they hit you with that 5% after six months, they pretend like you borrowed that 5% from me and now I'm gonna hit you again. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the interest is actually split into installments and uh, they hit you with it at certain intervals throughout the year. So annually is within one year, it's simple interest. There's no difference, uh, but more than one year, you start to see a difference. Semi-annually means they hit you with interest twice over the year, in which case they take the APR, they split into two parts and they hit you with each part two times throughout the year. Uh, quarterly is another very popular one. Uh, this means four times per year, which means every three months. So they'll take the APR divided by into three installments and they'll hit you with an installment every three months. Um, other typical ones, uh, monthly. Uh, weekly. And daily. Now this is obvious, but not so obvious because leap years and all that stuff and be like, well, what if it's uh, 20 days in February this year? It doesn't matter. They standardize these numbers. Monthly means 12 times per year uh, at the end of every month uh, or the end of every 30 days, uh, but usually it's just at the end of every month. Um, so it averages out to once every 30 days, but it's, it's every month. Weekly is 52, daily is 365. Um, so they don't count leap years. It's not like, oh, every 365.27 or, or whatever it actually is, they just, they round it to 365. So these are just the standard numbers, right? So I can say, blah, 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 compounded monthly, blah, 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 blah. And you should know, oh, I need to divide the APR by 12. And that's what they're hitting me with 12 times per year. Or, you know, uh, you can kind of take this as to mean, uh, the N value. We'll explain later. Well, now, we'll explain now. <laughs> um, so this leads to um, A equals, and we kind of derived this before, or we justified, I didn't actually derive it, but I showed you with the numbers where this formula kind of came from, which is, is good enough. Uh, justified last class, was it last class or the class before? I don't know, uh, it, I justified this for two before. But the, the formula ends up becoming P times one plus R over N raised to the NT. And this is the compound interest formula. Hello. 
or future value. when compounded n times per year. Okay. So n means the number on the right side of this table. So if they say quarterly, you plug in n equals four. They say weekly, plug in n equals 52, et cetera. Okay. And that's going to be the formula. Um, let's do an example. So here's a compound interest example. Again, nothing crazy at this point uh, because we're just learning. So nice round numbers. Well, the APR isn't rounded, but I had to make it a little bit interesting. So uh, you borrow $1,000, same $1,000, same APR, 9.5%. Um, and assuming you're not making any payments in the interim, so you're not cutting down on, on how much, because that is a strategy. And again, if you're doing simple interest, the strategy isn't as important. It does help, but not as much. But if you're, if you're being charged compound interest, it's definitely one strategy is definitely to make payments more often than you should and pay more than you should and try to pay it off early because uh, it can actually make a difference. But assuming you're not paying it off, you borrow a thousand dollars and you're just, you're not making any payments at all. Um, if you want to settle your debt at the end of the year, right? So at the end of the year, you're gonna just make one payment, pay it all off at the same time. How much would you have to pay if it was compounded quarterly versus compounded daily, okay? So that's what we're going to figure out, right? So you borrow this at the beginning of the year. You don't pay anything back throughout the year. The end of the year, you just say, okay, how much do I owe you? How much do I have to pay you back? How much would you have to pay back in both of these situations? So let's go to A. So here, I borrowed a thousand, so P is a thousand. Uh, my interest rate is again, 0 0.095. Um, my N is four because it said quarterly. Right, it's compounded quarterly. And my T is one, right? Because that's the, that was the loan term, right? Both of these situations, we're paying it at the end of the year, but it's, it's, there are two different situations because of how the interest is being applied throughout the year. In one situation, uh, they hit me with interest every three months. In the other situation, they hit me every day. Um, so now, since we're being compounded, I know that this is the formula that allows uh, me to calculate the amount owed, NT, did I put NT last time? Yes, uh, amount owed. So in this case, it would be 1,000, one plus 0 0.095 over four times four raised to, not time, four times one. And what is that? Plug in your calculators, make sure you're getting the right answers. So you're not on the test like, Professor, I knew what to do, but my I, plug in my calculator would give me the wrong answers. <laughs> None of that. Give you a chance right now to know how your calculator works. Different calculators will work differently. They'll have different ways they want you to input the answer. Is it 1,098.44? Uh, That's what I got. So either you're right or we're both wrong, but uh, I agree with that number. And hopefully everyone else tried and also agree with that number. Don't just take it on faith. You can't trust me and Tommy, right? We could be lying to you. You never know, right? Uh, so, yeah. Money is weird. Money makes people weird. Don't really, don't really trust anyone when it, when it comes to money. Oh yeah, I'm only. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, no. 
read the read the contract, read the fine print. Okay, so, and uh, do your own calculations. Um, you never know, right? You you go to a bank and someone tells you, oh, this is how much you'd have to pay back, and you're like, okay, no, do your own calculations. You don't know if that bank person accidentally typed in the wrong thing. Yeah. You know? Of course, they wouldn't do it on purpose. I'm not saying they would, but human error, right? You never know. Make sure you can do your own calculations. Um, and you, you should be doing your own calculations either way. Um, but yeah, that's uh, 1098 and 44 cents. I agree with that. Uh, here, again, I'm borrowing $1,000. Interest rate is 9.5%. Uh, now my N is 365 and time is one year. So the amount I have to pay back if it's compounded is this guy. And again, to make sure you memorize a formula, every time you want to use it, you write it down. Eventually, you'll just remember it. Eventually, it'll be a part of muscle memory. Your, your hand will remember, even when your brain isn't uh, remembering. So 1,000, 1 plus 0 0.095 over 365 raised to the 365 times 1. And what's that? Um, is it 1099 and 65 cents? That's what I thought. Okay, yeah. So you should get something like that. Um, if you do, then you know how to use your calculator. If you don't, you don't know how to use your calculator, you should learn. Uh, one more numerical example for today. Um, I had a lot more planned, but I, I didn't get to cover it in my other class. And obviously I'm gonna run out of time, won't be able to cover it in this class either. But it's fine. Like we're, we're not actually behind or anything, which is good. I feel like I'm already like half a class behind in my calculus class, but um, this class has a lot of cushion built into it. Um, there's a lot of time I saved for, you know, your projects and your, um, using calculators and so, so I, I buffered a lot of time here. So we're, we're good. Even though we covered about half of what I planned, <laughs> we're, we're still actually, we're still actually okay. Don't worry about it. Okay, so for our, from following up on our last example, right? So I mean, same situation as in this example, you're borrowing $1,000, 9.5 APR, okay? Um, we're assuming quarterly compounding here. So we're in the uh, part A of the last example. Uh, how long would it take before you owe $200 in interest? So let's say you decide ahead of time, you know what? I don't wanna pay back more than 200 in interest. Paying back more than 20% of what I borrowed is too much for me, I don't want it. How long can you keep that loan before it hits that value? Uh, so what do you guys think? How would you go about computing this? Do you plug in 200 for A? So A is the amount you pay back, right? Oh. Yeah, A is, the, A is the amount you pay back. A is the future value. So A uh, could not be 200 um, or else you'll be in trouble, right? You borrow a thousand, you can't pay back 200. <laughs> it's, not, it's not great. Um, how do we use that 200? Where does that 200 come in? Want to take another stab at it, Sophia? Do you do um, a thousand divided by 200? Well, a thousand divided by 200 would be what, five? 
right? So you can't borrow a thousand dollars. They charge you interest and then you pay back $5. I don't know. So, so remember, how, how does this actually work? I kind of used it, uh, kind of talked about the idea here. The amount you pay back is first the original amount you borrowed. Like if someone gives you $1,000, they're going to want back their $1,000 at least, right? Now, if they're like not your friend or your parents or they, they want, they can charge you a fee to borrow this. So that is added on top of the original amount, right? So if the interest, hmm, someone's calling here. If the interest you want is 200 and the original amount you borrowed is 1,000, what is the amount you'd have to pay back? Want to try again? Um, do you put the 200 in for P and then 1,000 is the A? Uh, no, P is always the original amount borrowed. Oh, okay. Right, so remember the definitions. This is important, which is why I wrote these guys down. So the original sum is what's called the principal, and that is P, right? So I'm borrowing $1,000. P is 1,000. Like, that's, that's not going to change, right? So... So P is a thousand for sure, All right? There's gonna be some amount I have to pay back. The amount I borrowed is a thousand. So that's the principal. Uh, the interest rate is 9.5%. Um, the time is one year. Uh, N is four, cause it says quarterly. Uh, no, the time is not one year. Time we don't know one year. N is four. Uh, so what would A be? How much do you have to pay back? I mean, you borrowed $1,000 and the interest is $200. So how much do you have to pay back? Is it 120? 120? Yeah. Like one, two, zero? Yes. So I lend you a thousand dollars and you want to pay me back a hundred and twenty dollars? Never mind. <laughs> right? I mean the you you have to remember, like it's going to be at least what you borrowed. So the answer is never going to be less than a thousand dollars. Right? When you borrow money, you have to pay back at least what you borrowed, right? Oh, I'm sorry. That's what I meant. I thought it was a hundred dollars. Oh no, it's a thousand. We're going one thousand two hundred dollars. One thousand two hundred, right? It's the one thousand plus the interest that you paid, right? So you remember the definitions, right? Very important. Interest is the fee that you're charged to borrow the money. The principal is what you borrowed. Of course. When you're paying it back, you're going to pay back what you borrowed plus the fee that they charge you because they charged you a fee. So you're, you're just going to add these two, right? The amount you pay back is the principal plus interest, right? So I borrowed $1,000. They charge me a fee. When I pay it back, I have to pay back the $1,000 plus the fee. The fee is the interest. So here, if the, uh, if the interest is 200, it means they're charging you a fee of $200 to borrow the $1,000. So when you're paying it back, you're going to pay by the hundred the thousand dollars that you originally borrowed, plus two hundred dollars in fees, which is the interest. So which means you need to pay back twelve hundred. Okay. Now, uh, in this scenario, what it, what is T? What is T? Which number would you put in for T? Is that what we're trying to figure out? That's what we're trying to figure out, right? I don't know what T is. In fact, that's what I'm trying to figure out because the question said, how long, right? Which means I don't know how long I'm borrowing this for. 
right? So it means I don't know the time. I know all these other things, which means if I'm using compounded interest and this is the formula, I know everything in this scenario except the time, which means I know that I have to pay back 1,200. I know that I borrowed 1,000. I borrowed it at 9.5%. Uh, and I am being, com it's compounded quarterly, so that's four. And so that's four for N here and T, I don't know. This is what we want. Okay, so here's where you guys come in. How do I solve for that T? Ideas, what would you do? Divide by a thousand. Divide by a thousand. Okay, so this will be 1.2. Okay, then what? Can you simplify the um, parentheses portion? So one plus 0 0.095 over four. Uh, we could, uh, not necessarily at this point, but we could. Yeah, what did you get for that? Um, I got 1.023, so 1.02. Yeah, so there's a danger in that. Um, you'd probably want to use more decimal points. Right, okay, so, so 1.023. If, if, yeah, so what I would say is if you want two decimal places, you should, and you're making any interim calculations, uh, you should probably do it with up to four decimal places and then round your final answer. So you, you wanna be careful because rounding while you're doing the calculations can make your answer go off, especially when you're in an exponential function, which this is. Um, so I probably wouldn't want to calculate that in the beginning, but you could. And you, you said, what was it? Um, 1.02375, if you want that many. Okay. Also, Professor, um, I need to go real quick because I have class next. Okay. If that's okay, thank you. Um, so this is uh, calculating in the uh, interim use at least four decimal places. But I, I probably won't want to calculate in the interim. Um, I probably leave it all at the end and then just round the final answer to the end. You tend to get a more accurate answer that way. Um, but yeah, how do we continue? We're already over time, so just uh, just like jump in and tell me, tell me whatever you're thinking. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. I just want to some engagement to see where we are. Uh, so I want to solve for something in the power. What is the strategy when you want to solve for something that's in an exponent? What's the, what's the strategy?
I mean, we talked about it yesterday. Spent a lot of time on it yesterday, actually. So this is why chapter two was important, even though we, I'm never going to directly check it, test you on chapter two. We learned about logs and exponents and how one can cancel the other and all that good stuff. Did a lot of calculations, solving for stuff. And we were solving things like e to the x equals nine and blah, blah, blah. Right, so we had an x in the power and we wanted to solve for the x, right? And so the strategy is to use logarithms. That's how we solve for things in powers. Um, now you can use any logarithms, but on a calculator, usually the standard ones that already there is log to the base 10 and log to the base E or LN. Um, but usually in finance, they just use log to the base 10. It actually doesn't matter which log you use as long as you're, you can get it easily on your calculator. So if you wanna solve for something in a power, you would log both sides, right? That's what we learned yesterday. Uh, throwing that log in there allows you to take the power and move it down in front. And then to solve for T, of course, I'm going to divide by the log and the four. So this would become log of 1.2 over 4 log 1 plus 0 0.095 over 4. And that's going to be, uh, I mean, we're already over time, so I'll just tell you guys what I got. Uh, I did calculate it somewhere. I got 1.94. But again, I mean, you guys don't want to talk to me, but please, I, I, I really encourage you to actually do this on your own and make sure you're getting that answer. Um, because otherwise, it means you don't know how to use your calculator correctly. Um, I want to point out something. We looked at the quarterly situation before, and we saw that at the end of the first year, we would owe $98. Now, Here's how the typical human brain is going to work. They're going to think, well, it takes me a year to pay back $98, which means that after two years, I'm still not going to pay back 200 yet. So it's probably going to be a little more than two years. But that's thinking linearly, not exponentially. It actually takes you less than two years before you'd have to pay back that $200. And of course, that's just after two years. Remember, the gap starts to widen more. So if you're looking five, 10 years down the road, your brain is going to overestimate the amount of time you have, have before things really start to get serious. And that's very important, right? Uh, so you would have to pay back less than half of 200 within the first year. But in order to pay back more than double that, it takes less than a year before you have to pay back more than double that. So that is a uh, very, very important for you to recognize with the, the compound interest. It grows faster than your brain is going to tell you it's growing. Um, so uh, there is also something I'd like to point out. So no more examples today, but I just wanted to mention a few sentences. Uh, you might notice from the first scenario, simple interest, uh, I had to pay $95 extra at the end of the year. In these compound examples, I had to pay about 98 or 99. And so you're like, oh, okay, I went from 95 to have to pay about 99. So they squeeze the four extra dollars out of me. Whoop de do for them. But again, I, I really want you to realize that that's just in the beginning. This is just after one year. Time-wise, this is nothing. In the beginning, you're not going to notice much difference between the exponential situation and the linear situation. However, 5, 10, 20, 30, 40 years down the road is when you re the difference becomes huge. It's not just gonna be $4 difference. It's gonna be a huge amount of difference, uh, like a lot. And we'll do more examples where you can see just how crazy this can get. Um, but I do want you to keep this in your mind. Remember, it does not seem like it now, but this is a big deal.
the differences become huge over time, right? So you need to remember that in the simple interest situation, you are in a polynomial situation. And we looked at the difference between a polynomial and an exponential before. So in simple interest, if over time, you're tracking the amount borrowed, at time zero, you borrowed P dollars, your amount you have to pay back is going to grow like a straight line, right? So this is literally going to be, you know, Y equals P plus P R T, where the P is like your Y intercept, and the RT is like your slope, right? So it's a, it's a straight line. Um, if you're looking at compound interest, and you start off at P, it grows like an exponential. And in the beginning, you might not notice uh, just how much difference there is, it'll start to grow a little slower, but it gets bigger over time. You have to realize that this is exponential and that matters a lot. Over a long period of time, it will get out of hand. Okay, so now uh, to just let you guys go, we're gonna do some real world examples. Just so you know that these things actually matter. So simple interest, there are situations in which you'll be charged simple interest, believe it or not. Um, typically car loans are simple interest. Um, they'll charge you that interest up front, but it's based on a simple interest calculation. Uh, things like uh, bank loans, personal loans, you know, personal bank loans. Uh, lines of credit. Uh, maybe I'll put lines of credit down below. These are compounded. Uh, I would say read the fine print here to see how they're compounded and how many times. Uh, lines of credit or credit cards. These are compounded. Compounded daily, in fact. Credit card hits you with interest at the end of every day. Um, student loans. These are compounded. Usually every day as well. Um, however, this splits into two categories. Uh, you can have a federal student loan uh, versus a personal student loan, where you just go to a bank and get a, a private private student loan is what it's called. So the difference between the federal and the private loan is the government pays the interest for you. As long as you're enrolled. At least half time. There is financial aid that you don't have to pay back, but if it's like a student loan, uh, you do have to pay back with interest compounded daily. However, the, the interest clock starts when you, when you stop being a student. Uh, for private student loans, all on you. They may not have forced you to make a payment until you graduate, but they're charging you interest the whole time. So when you graduate, you're definitely going to have more to pay back than the principal. With a federal student loan, at the end of your uh, school years, you'll have to pay back the, uh, the principal. Uh, and interest starts growing then. Um, so yeah, uh, we will stop there. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, understood that. Uh, scroll up yes. for two seconds.
Yes. Hello. Hello. Hey. Yeah. What's? Do you have a question? Oh shoot! I'm sorry. I went back on mute. The last example that you did when you switched log into the front, so we can bring uh four to the front. Uh yeah. Hold on. Yes. Yeah, that one. That one. I didn't get some. I didn't get all of it. Okay. Yeah. So I put I log everything. So it's it's log of this whole thing, log of this whole thing. But the log rules allow me to take the power and move it down in front. Okay. And then I just uh, solve for t after that by just dividing by this whole thing. So I took this part here and I divided by it. That's the part that goes under here. And once you do do that, make sure you can plug that in your calculator properly. You should be getting uh, 1.94 or something like that when you round it to two decimal places. Thank you. So I'll post the notes when I post the uh, when I post the the lecture video. But uh, yeah, hopefully that is uh, good. All right, thank you for your attention. Uh, we will stop there. I will see you guys on Friday. So, ciao.